From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Good evening, folks. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Today, I want to talk a few minutes about uh, abdominal aortic aneurysms. Abdominal aortic aneurysms, they are becoming common nowadays because of increased smoking and uh, hyperlipidemia and uh, also see the increase of COPD. Now, about 2% of elderly men will have this problem. And this problem, I will say AAA for the sake of brevity, is like four times more common in men than in women. So it is four times more likely to be affecting men than in women. And ruptured aortic aneurysms are the 13th leading cause of death in the United States. So it is the 13th leading cause of death in the United States. So AAA is something that is serious. You need to suspect this in different scenarios as patients come to you. Now, many pathological mechanisms have been proposed to explain this problem. There is this, you can use actually your common sense. Why something is increasing in its size? Because it is getting weakened, its sizes. Like for example, there's deficiency of vasorum in the elastic media of these arterial blood vessels. And also you can say the protease, uh, uh, protease uh, enzymes like uh, how they enzymatically they destruct the walls of the arteries so that's another fact and also there is family history if there is a family history of aortic aneurysm there is a 20 percent more risk of having AAA so you see family history is an important factor so the other important thing is uh, cigarette smoking it has a very strong inhibition on people who smoke. There is a 80 to 1 preponderance of AAA in smokers compared with non-smokers. So think about that folks. There is a 8 is to 1 preponderance of AAA in smokers than in a non-smoker. So that's another reason to stop smoking, right? and to encourage people to stop smoking because the spread of, I mean, the expansion of AAA would decrease if people stop smoking. So smoking goes hand in hand. When I talk about uh, the recommendation, the screening recommendations, I'm going to mention that fact again. But the, the, the important thing is the major complication of AAA is rupture with exsanguination. That's an important point. Rupture with exsanguination is the major complication of AAA. Now, clinical findings, what are the symptoms and signs? And the vast majority of unruptured aneurysms are asymptomatic. That's a very, very important point. The vast majority of unruptured aneurysms are asymptomatic. Okay, never forget that, 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 that point. And uh, um, I mean, uh, there are uh, sometimes uh, uh, they can present with the symptoms, of course. Uh, for example, when they erode on the nerves, for example, they can cause neuropathic pain. When they uh, uh, impinge on the vertebra, they can cause uh, back pain. And also there is a thing called inflammatory aneurysm when there is like two to four centimeters of the surrounding area, but aneurysm gets inflamed. And that's inflammatory aneurysm, a very dangerous condition that could cause pain too. And there is sometimes there, there would be some pain on the left side of umbilicus when there is this uh, aneurysms growing in size. And in obese patients, as you can guess, um, it, you, you, you may not be even able to palpate this. So in obese patients, the physical examination is less reliable. So you need a higher index of suspicion in obese patients. Now, imaging studies, the most important thing is ultrasound. Ultrasound is the least expensive uh, uh, method to follow the size. I mean, you sometimes you need to go 
to do repeated ultrasound examination just to follow the size of AAA and to follow uh, how these patients are doing even after surgery. Uh, so ultrasound of abdomen is a very, very important test. I mean, you could go for CT scan and MRI, which give you more resolution of the things of aneurysm and around the aneurysm, but ultrasound is least expensive and most commonly used. So you see the symptoms and the signs, they are not uh, much available, folks. You need to have a high index of suspicion. The other important point is the average expansion of AAA is 0.4 centimeters per year. So 0.4 centimeters per year, that's the expansion rate. So if a patient comes to you and he has a three centimeters aneurysm, sometimes patients, understandably, they get anxious, like, oh, what is going to happen is this aneurysm is going to rupture and I'm going to die of a bleeding in my gut. So you need to encourage, you need to give re reassurance to these patients that these aneurysms, they expand only 0.4 centimeters per year. And then there is uh, the size is actually is a very important. I mean, the best determinant of for risk of rupture is the size. Remember that, folks, because about 40% of aneurysms that are more than 5.5 centimeters, we are going to rupture in the next 14 months. You see, about 40% are going to rupture in the next 14 to 17 months if they are more than. 5.5 centimeters in size. So the size is the best determinant of uh, the risk of rupture in aneurysms. And uh, so you, you follow the size of uh, uh, these aneurysms. And the repair is mandatory if an aneurysm is symptomatic or enlarging rapidly. For example, if the aneurysm is uh, going more than 0.4 centimeters, you need to uh, do more frequent ultrasounds in these patients. And if the patient becomes symptomatic, then you need to refer them to surgery, like uh, surgery like uh, endovascular surgery or open repair. There are different things for this. Now, very importantly, I want to talk about screening tests. There's a lot of confusion, uh, but very simple. A one-time screening, a one-time screening for AAA by ultrasonography in men aged 65 to 75 who have ever smoked. So you see smoking here. A one-time screening by ultrasonography in men aged 65 to 75 who have ever smoked. Then there is no recommendation for or against for AAA screening in men 65 to 75 who never smoked. What about women? In women, there is a, a, the screen. There is a there is a strong advice against the screening because of a high false positive rate and a low prevalence of AAA. So you see. Um, in, in men who have ever smoked between 65 to 75, you do a one-time screening test and you follow that based on uh, what is shown in that uh, ultrasound. And in the non-smokers, it is either uh, there is no recommendation against, there is no recommendation for. But in the woman, it is strongly uh, um, uh, recommended not to do uh, the test. Why? Because there is a high false positive rate. Because if they see a test and uh, you are unnecessarily causing a lot of stress to the patient, because most of these patients, they worry, they become anxious once they find out that there is an aneurysm in the abdomen. And also the low prevalence. You remember I told you earlier that uh, there is a uh, men are four times more likely to be affected by AAA than women. So four times more in men. That's why we concentrate on men. That's why we do not go for women because they don't have that much risk. Also, you need to think about uh, smoking. Smoking is like, uh, as I said, in smokers, we are doing the screening test. And also, if the patients continue to smoke, the expansion rate will actually increase. 
there is this uh, at Veterans Administration Adam study is surprisingly surprisingly showed a low incidence of uh, AAA in diabetics. I mean, you know, we blame almost everything under the sun uh, for diabetes. We blame diabetes, right, for almost everything under the sun. But in this case, there is surprisingly low incidence of AAA in patients with diabetes. So you see, those are the important things I wanted to mention to you about AAA. Please feel free to visit our website and post more uh, points if you come across or even your criticisms are welcome. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.